Hey, 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 it's your girl Ashley, a.k.a. The Widow, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we are going to be calling, talking about Better Call Saul, episode 8 of season 6, and I can't wait to get into it with you guys. But first, please subscribe, make sure you have your notifications turned on, and like the video. The opening shot of the episode, uh, we see Howard's uh, shoe uh, on the beach. It's a great shot. This episode was directed by Vince Gilliam here. And so we see the shoe there laying on the beach, which is, which is a flash forward. We cut back to Lalo, who is still at Jimmy and Kim's home. And this is just moments after he's killed Howard. We see Howard's body laying on the floor. And, uh, you know, the, the body is in the blood pooling from the body. Um, you know, Jimmy and Kim are completely scared and Lalo explains to him why he's there. He wants, uh, Jimmy to go to, uh, Gustavo's home and to shoot him. He says he has a fool's weapon basically in the vehicle, in the glove box, revolver, and all he has to do is point and shoot, which is the title of episode eight. You know, Jimmy, um, pleads with Lalo to send Kim he says, you know, if, if she shows up at the door, they'll answer the door, you know, but if it was me, no one's going to open the door for me. You know, Kim is really kind of fighting back in that moment, but this is, you know, Jimmy's way of possibly, you know, saving her and so she can escape. Once Kim leaves, um, Jimmy doesn't know what's going to happen to him. You know, on the way to, Gustavo, on the way to Gustavo's home, um, Kim encounters uh, cops at the stoplight and she contemplates and she really this almost you know reaches out to them but she's committed to get back to her husband um and so she doesn't do that meanwhile back at um jimmy's home you know lalo is tying him up he's also explaining to him you know why he's there he said you know nacho set me up and you introduced me to nacho and we get that great callback line from jimmy when he says it was ignacio from breaking bad so that was really cool to see um, once Lalo leaves, um, you know, Jimmy is like, uh, tr trying to like fight himself out of the chair, but he knocks the chair over and he is face to face with Howard's body, which also is reminiscent of when Walt was, you know, laying in front of Hank's body in Breaking Bad. Kim reaches Gustavo's home and she's very, very nervous, obviously walking to the door. Mike stops her. And, you know, they bring her in and they question her, like, why are you here? And she says, you know, he's going to kill Jimmy if I don't get back. I have an hour. And they're like, who? And she basically tells them that Lalo sent her there, you know, to kill someone. And meanwhile, Gustavo is watching all of this unfold on the cameras. And Mike says, who? Who are you here to kill? And she, you know, looks around the room and she points to Gustavo's um, body double um, in that moment. Uh, then... Um, she explains to them that Lalo is still at her house. So Mike gathers all the men and they, and, you know, tells them we're going to Jimmy's house. They make those calls to the warehouse, you know, where the laundry facility is, where the lab is. And those guys are also going to be deployed and go to Jimmy's house. And then you, you start understanding what Lalo's plan was. It was a distraction, right? He wanted to get the guys away from the warehouse so he could, so he could gain entry into the warehouse to get the proof that Hector so uh, that told him, that told him that he needed in order to take Gustavo out right and have a reason. Gustavo at the other home, uh, you know, because it's connected to his house, you know, through an underground um, walkway. He calls up his guys up on the phone and speaks to Kim, and Kim explains to him that Jimmy's able to talk Lalo out of sending him and sends her and said. He then goes to the warehouse and realizes that. This was part of a distraction at the warehouse. He realizes that the metal fan is bent that's in the window. And then in that moment, when he looks back, Lalo is there and Lalo kills all of his guys, um, right there in that moment. And Lalo thinks he's got Gustavo trapped and Gustavo, uh, you know, in the last episode in the mid season finale, he planted that weapon. So he's got to try to get this weapon. Mike also descends on to Jimmy home and once it once he gets inside he realizes that Lalo is not there he calls Gustavo up on the phone and Gustavo doesn't answer obviously because you know uh, Lalo has him and Lalo throws the phone out he then tells him you know you're gonna take us on the tour on the way uh, to opening you know the to get access to the lab 
Gustavo shoots, uh, I mean, excuse me, Lalo shoots Gustavo in his Kevlar vest and it knocks the wind out of him. So he's playing and toying with, with uh, Gustavo. On this tour, you know, he's talking to Don Alito into the camera and says, you know, we're going to be able to use this to make so much money, you know, to, you know, to cook up drugs. And he explains that it took 10 months to do this. Um, and you know, Gustavo says, you can't kill me yet. And, um, Lalo says, oh, and why is that? And he said, because I haven't been able to tell a, a lot of what I think of him. And Lalo says, go ahead, go for it. So, you know, this is now Gustavo's turn to cause a distraction and he's pacing back and forth and he t calls them vermin. And he says, you all don't understand what blood for blood is, but I do. He knocks that light, um, causes the lights to go out. Um, and then in that moment, he grabs that gun that he had stashed there and he points and he shoots until that gun is empty. And then in the darkness, he notices that the camera is on the ground. He flips the other set of lights. And then in that moment, it's revealed that Lalo is laying on the ground. Um, Gustavo goes up to him and he's looking up you know, looking down on him. Gustavo has, has, you know, finally won the war between Lalo and, and Gustavo, but Lalo dies laughing. And I think he knows that Gustavo is not going to get away scot-free, that Gustavo's time is coming. Um, so I thought that that was a very powerful, interesting way for him to die, you know, and then, uh, Gustavo realizes that he's been shot, um, and he falls back. And then the next thing, you know, he calls Lyle, you know, who is his, you know, his guy that works for him. And Lyle is like the greatest employee singing, you know, the jingle. And he goes into work early. He's a dedicated employee. And Gustavo tells him, you know, I'm not going to be in for the next few days because he's been shot. And he's also um, got to pay the price for, for his part in this. Mike tells him this could have went horribly wrong. And Gustavo basically says, but it didn't. And it's like, you can see that he's not so scared anymore that maybe he feels like he can do a lot of this on his own without all these men backing him up all the time. Meanwhile, Mike goes back to Jim and Kimmy's apartment to, you know, dispose of Howard's body. They decide that they're going to move him out in their old refrigerator and they bring in a new refrigerator and Jimmy's like, what's going on? He was like, you're getting a new refrigerator. Hopefully stainless isn't a problem. He explains to Jim and Kim, uh, Jim and Kim that you need to go to about your normal day. Go do what you would normally do. Um, go to work and go to court at 10 o'clock. He tells Kim that, you know, and, you know, just act like it's another day that ends in Y. Um, so that was, you know, him trying to explain to them. And if, and if anyone tells you about Howard, make sure you immediately go to the cops because his car was seen here last night. We then get to the tomb that Lalo thought was going to be Gustavo's and we see them place Gustavo, I mean, excuse me, Lalo and Howard in that tomb. And it's like the cartel and the lawyer world mesh together and Howard was truly innocent. And you can see that that bothers Mike and we see them covering up this tomb, you know, which will be later used as a lab in Breaking Bad, which is kind of eerie when you think about it, right? And it's a, it's a, it's a cool shot. Um, if I'm going to give this episode, it's a nine out of 10, um, guys, um, let me know down below what you think for me. I absolutely love this show. Love the episode. Sure. Kim's going to make it out. What's going to happen with Jean? Um, and who is uh, Carol Burnett's character? I'm curious to think that maybe she's Howard's mother and maybe she's the one who sent Jeff after Jean. Jean, we know is going to come back and be a Saul Goodman that we all love and know. Where does Walt and Jesse fit into this uh, series? I'm excited for all of these things and more. Again, to me, I feel like Vince Gillian knocked it out of the park here directing this episode. I cannot wait till next week's episode. Until next time, I'm your girl, Ashley, a.k.a. The Widow. And you know what? I'm out of here. Bye. If the city for